Um, so let me first uh, welcome myself. Um, uh, my name is Alberto Palomo. I'm, I, I'm actually not the Secretary of State for Digitalization in Spain. That is my boss. Um, I am the Chief Data Officer for the Spanish Government, uh, but I'm actually coming here to talk to you today in my role as Chairman of the Governmental Advisory Board to GAIAX. You know, this is a group of um, now 17 different uh, representatives from government. Adrian on stage is, is, is one of our French counterparts. And our role from the Governmental Advisory Board is uh, how, to, um, how to properly connect the GAIAX initiative um, you know, with the uh, market reach through the GAIAX hubs, um, with the national strategies, you know, that, that we pursue from the governmental side and even at the European Commission level, which is also welcoming to this governmental advisory board. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I wasn't able to join you physically in, in Vienna. I'm, I'm calling in from Madrid. Uh, and Manuel and I, Manuel works in, in, in our team, and uh, we've prepared a presentation uh, along the lines, not so much of what we do in Spain in terms of data, um, but, you know, really the impactful role of governments uh, within, within GAIA-X. <clears throat> I think Manuel is helping me with, yeah. <clears throat> So I want to talk to you briefly, you know, really about the um, the importance that governments play in this GAIAX initiative, especially as we transition from an, an initial, uh, you know, inception and design phase in 2019, 2020, and 2021 into a more uh, production and and really development of code. And 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 uh, those of you that were at the GAIAX summit in Paris, um, that they were involved in, in in the creation and showing of of the demo of of the first um, GAIAX instruments. But especially 2023 for us governments is a very critical year because it's the year of adoption and it's really a year where markets need to start adopting these technologies, you know, and this is what it's all about. Um, I don't think it's new to anybody um, if we talk about a, a thriving European data economy, you know, these are, these are estimates, projected figures from uh, up to 2025 that sees a, a you know, a fivefold increase in uh, global data volume, you know, uh, within the Union. This is within the European Union. And, and a GDP um, that is estimated around a 6%, you know, 800 and almost 830 billion euros uh, for the 27th uh, European members. Um, <clears throat> so really, it's an incredible and exceptional growth opportunity. Um, but that as governments and as, 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 as uh, echoing the European Commission, that it must be really capitalized without the promotion of inequalities, you know, uh, Henriette was talking about this um, just now, uh, really without mortgaging the industrial or technological future of the union, and this has a lot to do with uh, technological sovereignty and, and, and autonomous open strategy, and without compromising the core European rights and, and values, you know, and, and really this is where GAIA-X comes, comes in. So if I had to say, what is a GAIA-X value proposal? So essentially, GAIA-X, in a nutshell, is, is a set of, it's an architecture, it's some code, but it's very importantly, a, a sort of a, a, a lingua franca, you know, a, a common interrelation model um, for digital ecosystems, you know? And, and this is the core of what the GAIA-X initiative is about, you know? And it really provides so a, a framework for regulatory technology, you know? Essentially, it's, it's a technology that one can apply to you know a set of rules labels you might hear a lot about labels during these two days and this can be horizontal labels for example um, um, regulation or or um, best practices coming from the european uh, at the european level but also sector specific and this is where immediately you start thinking about how it impacts your own local markets you know because the needs of a given member state market will be different across uh, can be different across different member states so there, there should be specific rules and labels that are specific to, to given markets one that immediately comes to mind is obviously health which is a very regulated um, industry Essentially, when you add these regulatory technologies with these rules and labels, the outcome is you have transparency. And that transparency is not only in what you're using and what the origin is, but in the operational behavior of what? Well, GAIA-X is all about data and data infrastructure. So essentially, you have transparency in the behavior of data sets, you have transparency in uh, infrastructure, in platform as a service, and this essentially translates into an objective metric system, you know, a, a system by which you can actually 
um, measure your trust in digital services. This objective metric system is completely new. This is, this is really the groundbreaking nature of the GAIA-X initiative, and it drives the sought after increased competition. You know, you want to increase competition and you want to level the market playing field, especially as you think about, you know, the, the, the European single digital market. This competition is hoped to really boost and drive innovative data-driven solutions, uh, solutions that because of that GAIA-X architecture, not only scale up easily, but they have a, a guarantee of conformity. And this is really a huge driver of the European single digital market, you know, which is uh, one of the key aspects of this digital decade program that the European Commission has pushed and that, the, you know, the Parliament and the European Council has, has really bought in. What is this single digital market for? Well, I don't think I have to tell you. It's to create a prosperous data economy is to be able to capitalize on new data technologies and cloud technologies um, and, and be able to, to really utilize these this data sets with transparency, with sovereignty, with 100% uh, alignment with regulatory frameworks and moreover with respect to these uh, European values, you know. And this is, a, this is a slide that I use a lot, and I have to give credit to the ASBL because it's heavily borrowing from the, guy, from the ASBL um, slide. So here I present you a, a simplified version of the GAIA-X architecture, you know, and, and this idea of ecosystems, which uh, you, you've probably heard before, um, you know, you could think of these horizontal ecosystems because they're really representations of industries in countries, you know, and, in, and, in, and even in regions within countries. You know, and this is, I, I think of these different uh, layers, you know, and this is borrowing from a National Institute of Standards in, that has to do with cloud, but I've, I've kind of extended this. So you can think of a, a first a business layer, really, and this is the one where you're mostly interested in the, in the sense of this, um, of this event. You know, this is Market X. It's all about, you know, how you create business opportunities, interconnected ecosystems, and generating business value, you know. But what lies underneath? Really what lies underneath is a layer of data and services, and, and this is the key, this is the X, you know, you have the purple X on the top, the half of the X, which is the data ecosystems, and then the blue uh, half, the bottom half of the X, which is the uh, infrastructure layer. And this is really where you're able, where your business layers are able to really interconnect and, um, you know, um, uh, data, uh, computing capabilities, interconnection capabilities, really this is the technical aspects of a data-driven digitalization, you know. And the key here, and you can see it there, is, is the ecosystems are actually talking to each other. You know, you're able to, to use ecosystems, algorithms, different resources across different ecosystems, you know. And this is really uh, where, where, where the value starts, you know, in, in able to produce, to generate services on top of those, um, that, that really that single data European market that, that the commission is aspiring to. And then the two layers underneath, they're essentially, they, they ought to be abstract. You know, this is the technical aspects. On the one hand, how are you able to really um, create that interconnection across ecosystems? Well, that's what federation and, and the GAIA-X federation services are all about, you know. You, you have things like uh, uh, verifiable credential wallets, you have things like uh, distributed ledger technologies, uh, commonly known as blockchain. Um, this is where you have a toolbox of things. This is really IT uh, and, and Web 3.0 really happening to, to federate um, those those resources that you see on the layer on top, you know, those data and services resources. And underneath all, and connecting back to this original idea of transparency and a sovereign digital economy, is the GAIA-X trust framework. You know, this is what GAIA-X is all about. Um, there's two services underneath, the registry service and the compliance service, but what's most important here is those two bottom layers make up what it's called the GAIA-X framework. And the idea is one, markets deploy um, a data ecosystem and an infrastructure ecosystem built upon, deployed upon the GAIA-X framework. Why? Because that way, one can act, that's the lingua franca that you can use to be able to really interconnect resources across different member states and even across the world, if you will, you know, in the future. Um, and so this is the idea, this is the way to uh, come to the single digital market and then on top of that, really deploy your, your business opportunities. <clears throat> 
So um, we talk about, you know, obviously there's, there's a huge merit to the um, benefit to this. So how do we articulate it? How do governments articulated within our national industries but also most importantly across our national industries because as as we also with with uh, with the uh, pandemic you know suddenly um, um, sectors are interconnected and mobility plays a huge role in health management you know um, so our view from the governmental advisory board is that Gaia X hub really are the keystone for market adoption and this has always been by design why? Because Gaia X hubs are the national contact points for companies. You know, this is a complex ecosystem. You know, I, I have the luxury of having an office that has people dedicated to this, but it requires a lot of resources to understand and, and wrap your brain around this concept. So the idea is national Gaia X hub provide that easy access to, you know, companies wanting to get into this sovereign data economy and they might not have the resources or time to, to, to look into detail. Um, also Gaia X hub, Hubs. They, they help build ecosystems of professionals because the key idea of this, um, uh, of this uh, single digital market is federation. It's all about federation. It's how to avoid, how to break silos of information and how to federate them with that lingua franca that um, the people like GaiaX are, are working on. Uh, so it's important to have that ecosystem of professionals that are interested in driving their value. Uh, and then Ultimately, you want to design and deploy use cases that leverage on the GaiaX framework that I explained on the on the slide before, um, right before. Um, and this is where the lighthouses, and I know you've been hearing a lot about lighthouses like the 10iX, and um, Ernst was talking about Stru uh, manufacturing X, Structura X also has, has uh, some presence. So what is the, the role the member states, uh, and specifically governments, can play within their GaiaX community? Well, they play a really important role because uh, as governments, we tend to arbitrate across market strategies. Um, in this ecosystem uh, with the European Commission as well, we are at the interplay of those of these new innovative instruments and regulatory frameworks that come from Europe. Um, you're probably aware of the Data Governance Act, and the Data Act is currently being negotiated in the European Parliament. Uh, so we, we're at the interplay of those two aspects, you know, with the private and the public coming together. So, you know, we need to cast light and provide guidance into what, you know, specific market failures that could be solved via GAIA-X, you know, and, and, and then we need to design and execute our national digital strategies. So those are guiding lights towards projects that really should be able to receive funding because we, we see market failures and our national digital strategies are aligned towards that, you know. <clears throat> so for once, um, um, we think that it's reasonable that governments that fund projects, and that, well, that it's their job to also ensure that those resources generate valuable outcomes, you know. <clears throat> but moreover, and because I mentioned already, European data spaces are federated by design. This is your typical platform economy or network economy where, you know, as the number of nodes, as the number of resources on that federation grows, and as the interconnection with other ecosystem grows, the whole the value of the whole system grows you know um so a key word here and is interoperability you know you won't have federation without interoperability and that's a complicated topic because it's not just the technical interoperability but it's also the semantic what do things mean what's a common language to use these resources but as any lawyer or business developer knows in a company well, you have to think about the legal aspects. How do I ensure that my regulation matches with yours so that we're not creating something inconsistent? Organizationally speaking, are our companies, are, are our organizations ready to work and to exploit the interoperability? And very importantly, are our business models coherently, are they interoperable and coherently designed? So these are, these are key success factors that people need to think about. And so governments uh, really remain key players in driving this interoperability. Uh, on the one hand, through the governmental advisory board to GAIA-X, uh, a lot of the work we do and that I'm driving as chairman is harmonizing, you know, harmonizing how different countries are looking at what are our prime areas of investment? What are the volumes of funding that we're mobilizing to the private industries? What's the coherence, how to make a coherent proposal? How, how are projects going forward? And, and what are we finding that works and doesn't work? Ultimately, I think it's important for us to really uh, design a, a common, um, you know, uh, 
process flow across national projects, you know, and, and not just within our own countries, but across cross countries, uh, because this will allow a uniform spreading and implementation of, of the Gaia X message. And this is important because this, if you if you look into a, an internet search what Gaia X means, you're going to find different uh, meanings of it. But really, there's only a single one, you know. And and that's why it's important to all understand, be on the same page as to what you know the Gaia X message is and how to drive it forward. Ultimately, as governments, this is what we I am measured in to generate productive economies of scale so that we don't reinvent the wheel. And, uh, and we want to steer our national constituencies. You know, we want to guide them um, and help them towards, uh, you know, a, a really the, the thriving data economy, you know, a sovereign data-driven digitalization. Well, f first of all, it's a great pleasure to be here. I would like to thank all the GAIX team and the rest of the teams that are taking care of us and uh, making this a really great event. So thanks for joining us here in Vienna, a wonderful place to be. Uh, I would like to uh, share with you some more uh, thoughts and ideas about uh, this uh, concept of digital public goods as enablers and uh, the public and private partnership for a sovereign data uh, economy. Uh, we have been talking about the, the role of uh, the national hub of GIAX uh, as uh, key players in the market adoption. And this is the view we have uh, for our national hub in, in Spain. Uh, we think that our hub is uh, playing a key role uh, during this uh, kind of things uh, you can see. Uh, first of all, organizing our Spanish ecosystem and uh, well to assess uh, the, the kind of projects that could be uh, developed. Uh, this is something we, we, we think it's really uh, core since uh, I, our hub is able to uh, represent the voice of the, uh, of the industry. Uh, then they are able to promote the kind of projects that probably need to be financed and, and, and need to be uh, uh, support from the public uh, from the public side, and probably and that's why it is at the center of the of the image. Uh, this is just a mental model, as, as you can see. We think that uh, our hub is uh, playing a key role in uh, fostering the capacity to execute projects. Uh, they are uh, speaking from the demand side and they are tr uh, uh, transforming their um, uh, industrial challenges in specific use cases uh, with a very uh, business uh, component, a very strong uh, business component, and creating, developing what we call uh, minimum viable data spaces that will help us to understand how to build the uh, final uh, industrial data spaces that we, that we need. Doing that, they will get the advancement of our own uh, national technology industry, which is uh, clearly supporting this kind of, uh, of projects, and will help to develop and uh, deploy the different architectures, uh, but also method methodologies. We, we, we have heard this before. It's not all it's not also hard infrastructure, but also uh, software infrastructure. And then uh, it's when p people come to a stage. Uh, we, we are talking about a people-centric approach. We think that um, our hub is uh, playing a key role in uh, creating that kind of community and that kind of community of practice where uh, all the lessons learned can be, uh, well, uh, uh, um, understood and used to move uh, forward. We are really interested in understanding how, as a government, we play a key role, an impactful role, as Alberto said before, in terms of digital public goods. When Antonio Guterres, Secretary General in, in United Nations, um, great, thank you said that, uh, well, digital technology is uh, shaping history. You know, this, this kind of movements like Gaia X is, is, is doing that uh, exactly. We are shaping history. But uh, wh where, where is it going to take us? How, how can we be sure that uh, our 
rights, our dignity uh, uh, will be enhanced. Uh, um, uh, we, we need to become more uh, safe, more secure. And the answers to, to all these questions uh, rely on uh, on trust, rely on people, and depend on our ability to work together across nations, across actors, across stakeholders, across uh, disciplines, across industries, across different uh, um, environments where all these things are being uh, decided. And at this point, uh, the, the way we see the governmental intervention to foster digital public goods, and more concretely, the role or the mission that we have as a national Spanish uh, data office is to uh, overcome those challenges, but also those barriers uh, in the development of a prosperous data economy across our different key uh, and strategic uh, national industries. Uh, mainly leveraging the current um, European poli political and regulatory frameworks and uh, specifically accelerating all the national um, capabilities. So here the, uh, we, we need to think, or we want to think this uh, digital public goods as enablers, as the, the assets that we can use to create um, the minimum conditions that all the national ecosystems need to get all these all these stakeholders, all the key players, on board the different projects that we are trying to develop with uh, the with the industry. Since we need to create or to build that digital public infrastructure, and we cannot um, think that, well, something like a, a random organization, a random project somewhere in, in Europe is supporting everything. If we, if we want to create a modern digital infrastructure, we need to understand with what kind of digital public goods uh, can we as government to push, to, 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 to support and to foster to get this uh, ecosystem and this uh, digital public infrastructure uh, built to get things uh, happen. And at this point, uh, we see this relationship before, uh, between uh, the governance model and the government's role. As you can see, we, we, we see it as different layers uh, supporting each other uh, with, uh, at the top of the pyramid, we have the, the, the business uh, needs, the business opportunities, which are the ones that are creating all the uh, processes in, that, uh, in those federated data uh, ecosystems. And what we see is that uh, government role in this uh, process uh, has four uh, really important points. First of all, aligning with the voice of the market, with the voice of the industry, as I said before, and that will help us to prioritize the kind of right investments that we need in our country. Second point, seeking harmonized uh, implementations. We, need, we, we have been talking about the standardization as a key point uh, uh, during uh, all the, all the uh, event. Third point, to promote uh, governance uh, framework that, well, that is able to support new models for digital cooperation. Again, this is about trust, this is about people, this is about people trying to make things together as we said when we were talking about digital public goods. And finally, uh, that software and hardware digital infrastructure that with uh, digital public goods enabling that infratech, that infrastructure, will provide a means to reusability, um, well, lower, lowering entry barriers, as we, as we said before. And finally, uh, just uh, some ideas uh, we will be more than happy to, sh to, to continue discussing with you after this uh, um, event about what digital 
public goods make sense in the da data spaces arena and the data, data spaces landscape. Well, mainly two, ca two great categories, infratech and uh, community building, as you see. And things, but just food for thought, just ideas that can be uh, discussed uh, uh, on, an, uh, on an open environment, things like cross-sectoral infrastructure and, and code. We are thinking about um, creating, uh, um, uh, well, spaces to experiment with lab capabilities with, where companies can test uh, architectural models, uh, building blocks, different components. We are thinking about mm, having a service catalog with data sets, with computing capability, with uh, artificial intelligence services, uh, business intelligence. This is market creation for the, from the offer side, if you want to say it this way. We need something like a typical consulting approach, business analysis, assist to be analysis, gap uh, detections, uh, SWOT analysis, risk matrix, and, and so on. Obviously, collaborative environments, since, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, digital whiteboards, um, working groups, IDEs, uh, etc. Uh, knowledge management, we need uh, technical guides, frequently asked ask questions, we need reports, we also need mm, wikis, best practices, and finally we need community. We need a place where we can serve mm, projects, where we can serve references, and we, where we can discuss with each other to cooperate and, uh, and collaborate. So as I said, it would be a pleasure to keep on with the discussion, sharing with you these ideas we have tried to, to bring to you about how, uh, well, the digital public goods can build a digital public infrastructure that foster uh, innovation in our country. Thank you very much. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it was very uh, enlightening, and it's very impressive to see how, uh, on the uh, Spanish government side, you have really uh, thought this through. Um, so um, I hope we will have the opportunity to, to discuss more uh, uh, on all what you, you presented today. Um, so um, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for having me here today. I'm very pleased to. Um, to be here with you all. Um, so I'm uh, Adrien Laroche. Uh, I'm working uh, at the French Ministry of Economics, Finance, and Industrial and Digital Sovereignty. So that's the full title of uh, Bruno Le Maire. Uh, so you, you get the goal uh, right away. Um, and I'm working at the Digital Economy Department. Uh, to be honest, I'm more... Uh, uh, a guy from the uh, bottom part of the X. Uh, I deal with uh, cloud technologies, uh, high performance computing, uh, quantum technologies, uh, but also with uh, data economy projects. Um, and of course, uh, uh, for any, any use case, any uh, data space projects uh, that I uh, heard, heard from, that I received, I, I go to my colleagues from the Ministry of Climate, of Transportation, and so on to ask them, okay, what do you think of the use cases? Is this uh, current with your priorities, uh, and, and so on. Um, so uh, after this uh, very uh, enlightening uh, presentation from my Spanish colleagues, uh, I, I want to uh, present you a bit more maybe uh, concretely uh, what is the, the French strategy for, for cloud computing and data sharing. Um, so it's called for cloud at the beginning, but it really encompasses both cloud and data sharing issues. Um, so very quickly, we have uh, three main pillars uh, of this uh, cloud strategy. So the first one is the cloud of trust or trusted cloud strategy. Um, I think you've all heard of the Secnum Cloud label that is operated by uh, ANSI or Cybersecurity Agency. 
uh, with a lot of uh, technical cybersecurity requirements, but also uh, what is required to obtain uh, protection against um, illegal uh, access to data uh, because of um, uh, extra EU laws with extraterritorial reach. Uh, so, of course, uh, this is not today's topic, uh, but it, just to, to remind you how, how important uh, it is for, for us. Uh, and this uh, is, of course, uh, aligned with uh, European uh, strategy uh, on uh, Secnum Cloud is, uh, um, we hope, uh, will be current with uh, EUCS uh, high. Um, so it's not the topic of today, but I really want to, to reassure you that we are both very uh, determined and very uh, reasonable in what we, we hope for regarding uh, EUCS. Uh, so I hope this would uh, uh, soon uh, arrive at, at something. So the, the second part of our, of our strategy is the cloud-first policy. Uh, so re there is really the um, government own move to cloud strategy. So it's animated by uh, DINUM, so the, the sort of the, the uh, IT uh, chief of the, of the French government. Uh, and so we had a circular from the Prime Minister in 2021 saying, okay, from now on, all IT projects, all applications in the central administration of France, if it's new projects, they have to be cloud-based. So it was a, a very important thing for us to say, we, you have to think cloud first, and you don't use uh, uh, on-premise servers for your new projects. And of course, when you go to the cloud, you have to think about your sensitive, particularly sensitive data. And so in case of particular sensitive data, you have to use either one of the two um, own clouds of the government uh, or a commercial public cloud offer that is Secnum Cloud qualified. Uh, but really, the main part is the first one. It's the cloud-first uh, strategy, the cloud-first move. And the, the third part, which is the one I'm going to, to detail today, uh, is what we call an industrial acceleration strategy. Uh, it's part of a much larger investment plan that is called France 2030. Um, and basically, the goals are to uh, support the growth of innovative uh, French and European uh, cloud products and services. And I'm going to, to detail this uh, a bit. Um, so what, what do you have to know uh, on the French uh, strategy on cloud computing? Uh, with Irmark, um, 677 million euros uh, to, to support projects. And of course, uh, what is key is that this is really part of this much bigger plan with 66 billion euros um, to, to address really the great, great challenges uh, of today. So the, we speak a lot about the double ecological and digital transition, and that's uh, really the, the, the key uh, insights uh, here. So I pass along the, the, the rest. Um, so we have uh, four, four axes. The first one is really the, the bottom of the, of the export, uh, developing, developing innovative cloud and edge computing solutions. So we had a call for interest uh, back in 2021. Um, with a, a, a huge uh, chunk of, of the money earmarked. Uh, what do you have to, to, um, to know here? Uh, first, uh, the um, uh, IPCI cloud infrastructure and services. So it's a very important uh, European project with 12 European member states. And of course, uh, I, I see uh, some, of them, uh, some of them here. So there are numerous um, direct and indirect partners. What is the difference? It's just that the first one have to be notified to the commission, to DG competition, to get their uh, state aid. Uh, right now, we're in the middle of a validation process with DG competition. Uh, it takes an awfully uh, long time, of course. It's very difficult for, for the, the providers, the businesses. Um, but we're going through it. Uh, we are positive uh, that the process is, is going through. Uh, but what you need to know if you're not part of the IPCI cloud is that once it's validated, it will be an uh, open, innovative ecosystem on cloud solutions and technologies. 
and that it will be possible, of course, to join later uh, as member state or as a, a, a business if you have a project that fits uh, within the, the uh, whole uh, IPSI cloud narrative. Um, and if you, you, you don't ask for a, a too large a state aid, you won't need to, to uh, notify to the Commission, so uh, it will be much simpler uh, once we have validated this, this first, uh, first big step. So, so please, please keep that uh, in, in mind. And the, the, the second point uh, is that, of course, not all projects uh, are part of the IPCI cloud. Um, and we've already uh, eroded roughly uh, 130 million euros of state aid to, to uh, national projects. Uh, and I would insist there that uh, the, the, really the first euros uh, that came out of a pocket of the French government regarding those projects uh, was the uh, 15 million euros uh, dedicated to the French part of the GAIX Federation service. So really the first thing that we did in this whole uh, cloud strategy was to fund this uh, digital public good um, that is uh, really a key part of, of what, uh, what GaiaX is doing uh, in order to, to build this uh, trust engine for the data-driven uh, economy. Um, so that, that's the first part. Um, it's not, uh, there are other parts uh, of this first axis. Uh, so we, we had a call for projects for uh, SaaS collaborative suits for the digital workplace. So basically supporting uh, competitors for uh, Microsoft 365. Um, we hope to, to announce uh, Loris uh, soon. Uh, and the second uh, thing that we did is uh, to create a second cloud support scheme for startup and SMEs. Uh, so, of course, it's only 3.5 million euros for now. Um, we we launched our first uh, call for, for interest. We have very positive engagement from the, from the ecosystem. And, of course, um, today it's second cloud, but uh, if they go for this uh, support scheme, they're going to be, uh, let's say, EUCS ready. Uh, and so we really hope that this would contribute to uh, achieving a, a common European uh, market for trusted cloud offers. The second part is a more uh, low tier -all part, uh, supporting technological research, innovation, and maturation. Uh, I'm not uh, detailing this today, but we have a, a significant amount of budget dedicated to this as well. Um, what you need to know is that we finally validated uh, the, the, the big research program of uh, 56 million euros. Uh, and individual selected projects are going to be launched in a few months. Um, we're going to have an inauguration event, a, a kickstart event uh, in France for this uh, PEPR cloud. I don't know when and where yet, uh, but of course, uh, if you, uh, if yourself are interested, of if you have uh, uh, either either uh, a member of uh, uh, research and innovation administrations or of your uh, innovation directions in the businesses that are very interested and would be like to 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 be part or, or to attend to this event, please please let us know. Uh, we will, of course, it's. Uh, finance in France, but it's in collaboration with a lot of European uh, researchers, so, so uh, you, you're most welcome. So the third axis uh, is supporting sectoral data spaces, so where it's uh, right directly uh, uh, within the, the, the scope of, of this MarketX event, so we have earmarked uh, 150 million euros to support such data spaces. Um, we've launched uh, a call for projects uh, in 2022 with first runs uh, that are now behind us. So it's in the uh, instruction is in the in the pipes. Uh, we are going to have next runs. Uh, it's not official yet, but I can tell you it's going to be June 2023 and December 2023, and extra in 2024, 2025. So. Um, 
uh, Francesco told me yesterday that we as government uh, must be uh, clearer on what we want and what our objectives are. So very clearly uh, what we want is to incentivize and support um, key sectors to move towards uh, data-driven economy. Um, and uh, so yeah, that, that's the goal. Uh, and of course, um, we, we didn't define ex ante uh, sectorial specific goals uh, because uh, as I've uh, explained to you, we've come more from the, the bottom part of X, but uh, we do it on a case by case basis, uh, project by project. We, we go uh, see our colleagues in other administrations uh, to, to, to be sure that the projects are in line uh, with, uh, with the priorities. And of course, uh, it has been mentioned uh, again and again, uh, the, the fourth axis is retraining, uh, training or retraining human resources, and there's an uh, open call for projects uh, as well. Yeah. So um, just to say that uh, we are supporting projects at each layer of the of the X. Um, we uh, at least we, at the beginning we had only one. Uh, well-known projects of Ag Data Hub, but others are coming too. And so, Francesco, Roland, I hope that your, uh, your process uh, for Lighthouse project is scalable because you have a, a big wave coming, uh, not only from France, but from uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, countries. Um, and I think that from the French government perspective, uh, we see that the Gaia X, uh, not only the ice build, but the ecosystem as well is really uh, gaining uh, momentum. Uh, so uh, uh, good job and keep speeding up. Thank you.